Good morning, my name is Amy Chapman and I'm the head here at Derby High School. We're an independent school welcoming boys and girls aged 3 to 18. I would like to formally welcome you to our preschool and reception open morning. First, I will begin with sharing with you the vision that underpins our school. First and foremost, we want our children to go home happy most nights. I say most nights because they might have a test tomorrow that they're not really looking forward to, but most nights they'll go home happy. Secondly, excellent academic results. Our children achieve their very best to go on to the next stage in their academic career. Thirdly, strong pastoral support and good discipline. If a child isn't happy, they're not going to thrive. And finally, lots and lots of extracurricular activities. I'm sorry we can't welcome you for a tour in person here at Derby High at the moment. But as soon as we can, we'd be delighted to welcome you in person to see our facilities, meet with our wonderful staff and see the students as they're learning through the day. You really can only see when you come here what a special place Derby High is. Throughout this morning's presentations, our Head of Primary, Mr Jeremy Harper, and our Registrar, Ms Sue Callaghan, will be answering your questions live on the Q&A chat. Please do ask anything you feel will help you in your decision making. You will now hear from Mr Harper, some of our wonderful children, and our specialist teaching staff here at Derby High. Hello and welcome to Derby High Primary. I'm Jeremy Harper, the Primary Head, and welcome to the Infant Building. We have small class sizes which allow the children to flourish at their own pace. We also have a team of specialist staff, including our music teacher you can hear in the background, teaching some children with their boom whackers. Before you hear any more, you'll hear from the EYFS team, the children themselves, but also Miss Highland and Mrs Foster, who will explain about the seven areas of learning in our early years. I like my class and I like the food and I like doing my name card and I like to read books and um, I like to play with my friends and like to do phonics. I like playing with my friends and um I like doing my name card and I like reading books. Uh, I like I like doing the number jigsaws. I, I, I like the number jigsaws which make it really big which is really big. I love playing with my friends at outside. And I like oh, doing PA. Yeah. I like doing tennis. I like when I play and I do maths. I like playing with friends. So we like eating bread and uh, tomatoes and different things we eat. And we also like sitting next to each other at lunch time. We like uh, play, uh, uh, eating veggies foods we like. I like chocolate cake pudding. I like the raisins with uh, cakes. I like about school that I have a nice teacher. I like meeting new friends. Hello there, I'm Mrs Foster and I'm Miss Highland and we're the teachers uh, in the early years foundation stage at Derby High School. So today we're going to give you a little bit of information regarding how we teach in the early years at Derby High School. We follow the development matters and this has seven areas. Three, prime, these are physical development, communication language and personal, social and emotional development. And then we have four specific, these are literacy, mathematics, understanding the world and expressive arts and design.
Literacy is split into two main subject areas. These are reading and writing. Now, a big part of this is phonics. This really supports the children with both their reading, which is their decoding, and also with their writing, which is the encoding, the spelling side of this. So phonics is a really big area that we focus on in the, in the early years. Now, in reception, we start from phase two, and generally we work through phase two, up to phase three and phase four, sometimes tippling into phase five. So we start with the basic letters, and these are called the graphs, and we look at the sounds that each of these letters makes, and also the name of them. So we just make sure that we've got both understanding of this. Sound. And again. Sound. And again. One more time. Now write it well done, help your partner. Now the children will be encouraged to use this through an action. So they'll learn all the actions to go with each of the letters. The children then use this knowledge when they're reading, so to help them decode, and we use lots of robot arms and different decoding methods to support the children to be able to read words. And then when they're doing their writing, we also encourage them to use their phonics to try and sound out to spell independently. Now when we're doing writing lessons, we do encourage the children to do as much independent sounding out as possible. And this means that not all words will always, always be spelt correctly, however they will be phonetically correct. And this is what we hope by the end of the year. Now there are some words that we teach within phonics that are called tricky words. Now these are words that just cannot be sounded out and they are sight words they have to just learn. So we do think about those also to encourage the children to be able to read those words within stories and also to be able to spell them when they're writing. Within our phonics, we have children starting at very different levels. So some children will come into school and they might know some of the graphemes already. Uh, we have some children who start that may not know any of these and that's absolutely fine. We work with all of the children and we do differentiate according to each child's needs. So it might be that some children start with the phase two graphemes and start with the basic letter S and then it makes the s sound and they'll practice all the actions and with the songs. And then we'll also have children that might start at phase three depending on obviously their previous knowledge. So all of this is differentiated according to the children. Now there are lots of links also to other subject areas, so lots of the subjects interlink within the early years development matters. So phonics and literacy link a lot with physical development for the writing skills and also with the communication in language with their use of language. So in reception we really focus um, on the numbers up to 20. So as you can see we have our number line to 20 and the children will start by counting up to 20. After that we'll look at each number in detail and we'll look at the way the number is represented so the child will be able to write number one. We'll have a little look at counting the correct object to match the numeral as well. So if we're looking at number three the children will be able to show us three fingers or three objects. When we've done that, uh, the children will put the numbers in order. So if we gave them three numbers, say number 6, 17 and 20, they should be able to put these numbers in order. We rarely focus on one more and one less than. And we also then move on to addition and subtraction. So the children become very, very um, confident learners with numbers up to 20. We also look at shape, space and measures. We focus on the names of 2D shapes and 3D shapes. We'll talk about the shapes and we'll look at all of the properties so the children will be able to tell us how many corners the shape has or how many edges. So we look at 2D shapes first and then 3D shapes in detail. After that, we'll look at patterns, so the children will be able to continue a pattern. So we might do red, blue, red, blue, and they'll be able to continue that pattern for us. We also look at money, so the 1p, 2p, 5p and 10p coin. And also, we have a little look at time as well. So at this stage, we probably only look at o'clock and half past. We also look at measures, so we will measure height and capacity and length and the children will be able to put things in order. So at this stage we talk a lot about the language, so if we were doing capacity the children would be able to tell us that something was half full or half empty or empty and full.
So this is when the children paint and draw and use felt tips and play-doh so they can represent um, their images of people or objects either by drawing and painting or making 3D models with say play-doh or salt dough. They'll use um, scissors, they'll also use paintbrushes and felt tips, pastels, so we use a wide range of uh, media and materials. The children learn to sing songs and they learn to dance and uh, in time to music which they absolutely love. And then in the role play area the children can actually act out little narratives so they might decide that they're going to go to a bonfire party so they might act out getting dressed and putting their scarves on and their woolly hats and going out and just having a fantastic party for bonfire night. The fourth specific area of development matters is understanding the world. Now this is split into three subject areas. The first being the world and this is looking at patterns and change, seasons and animals and plants. The next being technology. Now technology focuses on things like computers and iPads but also looking at the technology used in shops, so tills, washing machines and about the differences between home and school. The third is people and communities. Now this looks at home traditions, so it could be on a Friday having pizzas, that could be your family tradition, or it also looks at cultural traditions as well and also religious traditions. So this year we focused on um, Hinduism and we've looked at Diwali, we also look at Christianity and Christmas, and we've also looked at bonfire night and other historical events. I'm Mrs Cook and I'm Head of Primary Music here at Derby High School. Music is such a vital part of the early years curriculum. I deliver specialist music lessons here in a dedicated music room which covers a wide curriculum for our early years children. The curriculum I provide is divided into three clear areas. So first we focus on listening skills. The second area is exploring sounds. So we start with the percussion instruments and then delve deeper into the four families of the orchestra, listening to specific sounds. So children are really able to pick out one instrument from the whole orchestra. We have all sorts of ensembles that we provide. We have recorder groups, we have boom whackers. We start really simple with rhythm. Our next focus is singing and performing. We start off by focusing on all sorts of singing techniques, our breathing, our sound, the quality of our voices as a group, and then we move on to solo work. So when we look at our performances at Harvest Festival, we start with groups, and then as we progress through the year towards Christmas, we introduce some of our children to do solos. This gives them immense confidence from an early age. Our instrumental program offers piano lessons specifically to our reception children and we have a specialist piano teacher who teaches here at Derby High School who really caters for our young children. Year one and two pupils are given the opportunity to start playing the violin and cello. Individual lessons are provided again by specialist music teachers. I hope you've enjoyed learning about music here at Derby High Primary School. If you have any further questions please do ask. Okay, pose a question. Say, comment t'appelles-tu? Comment t'appelles-tu? Comment t'appelles-tu? Je m'appelle Corée. Très bien. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Comment t'appelles-tu? Bonsoir, bonsoir. Comment t'appelles-tu?
Hello, my name is Miss Sterling and I'm the Director of Sport here at Derby High. I'm talking to you from inside the Infant Hall where some of our early years PE lessons go on. Also, it's a great space. If the weather is quite wet outside, we can always come in and use this space. So here at Derby High, we think it's really important to develop your child's lifelong love of physical education and sport. We want them to go into adulthood feeling confident and continuing to participate in sport and exercise and live a healthy, active lifestyle. So here at Derby High, we have PE specialists that teach all the way from um, early years up to sixth form. Um, in early years, they have an hour and a half of PE a week, which is split into two PE sessions. And in reception, they get to participate in a tennis lesson with a specialised coach. And as they move into year one, they'll start their swimming lessons once a week and they'll do this all the way up to year six. So in early years, one of our main aims is to develop fundamental motor skills. We want your child to be confident of those basic skills such as running, jumping, throwing, bounding, skipping, all of those um, skills that underpin uh, sp specific sports. Um, we want them to be equipped with those skills so then when they move into um, the primary junior section and we take part in our games afternoons, they feel confident to specialise in a particular sport or sports. Ultimately, we want your child to have fun in their PE lessons so that they develop this lifelong love for physical activity and continue to participate into adulthood. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about primary PE here at Derby High. Please get in touch if you have any questions. In the early years, we value that sense of adventure, getting the children outside with their wellies on, in whatever the weather, to explore our beautiful grounds, be that on the trim trail by our environmental area, or simply hanging bird feeders on a tree. And it's not just at lunch times or after school clubs, which include construction club or story time that we'll take the children outside. It's also through the curriculum, where they'll be learning in literacy about the stick man, or going on a bear hunt, we'll use our grounds to bring that to life. Hello, I'm Chaplain Joe, and I'm just going to talk for a little while about how we build community here at Derby High. And first of all, that sense of how we care and look after one another. As a school with a strong Christian ethos and value base, we're really committed to creating an environment where pupils can feel safe and be happy during their time at school and a really important part of that is the pastoral care which uh, happens in all sorts of different ways throughout the school. Our class teachers and form tutors are a really important part of that. They're the first port of call for children and young people to talk to if they have issues, concerns or any questions at all and they build really strong relationships with the pupils in their particular class. And uh, through the whole school, uh, primary and seniors, an important part of my role is to be available to any pupil who wants to talk to me, whether it's about uh, something relatively minor, maybe they've just got a concern or uh, a, a problem that they want to chat through with somebody, or if there's a more long-term issue where a pupil needs support, I'm available to give that ongoing support and an encouragement um, over a longer period of time. So students might be, meet with me once or they might we, meet with me on a regular basis and that's uh, an important part of the overall framework of what we do. As well as pastoral care, another way that we build community is through our assemblies and through our services. We take time each week to reflect and think about important issues, uh, the, the issues uh, are, that are faces in the world, but things closer to home, the values that we hold dear, kindness, compassion, consideration for others, thoughtfulness, achievement, all kinds of things that we want to encourage pupils to think about and take seriously in their lives. Those opportunities for reflection and thought are a really important part of what we do here. And as well as each week we also have services at different times of year at the beginnings and ends of terms at harvest, Christmas and Easter to think about and reflect on those important times to celebrate together 
and to take time to enjoy those celebrations as we think about those important seasons. Another important part of building community together is a sense of focusing on the world beyond the school and a really key part of that is our work for charity and much of our charity work comes from ideas and things that students themselves feel passionately about both in terms of the charities that we support and the way we go about raising money. So that focus on the world beyond ourselves is a really important part of what we do. So whether it's through that charity work, through our assemblies, our services, through the ways in which we support pupils and care for one another, we're really committed to making this a happy and safe place to be. Thank you for joining us today and learning all about our early years. I hope you've enjoyed posting questions in the area on our chat zone and if you have any further questions please post them in the link and we'll be remaining online to answer those after this presentation. There will also be links to our virtual tours for both infants and juniors and also a link to our digital highlights, our annual yearbook. If you have any questions then please send them to our registrar Miss Callaghan and the details will follow. Thank you.